And I remember I was with my Mima and we were doing something and she asked me to go get some, whatever she asked me to get, there was like two options. And I was like, oh, I think it's this one. Mm-hmm. And then I second guessed myself and I went and got the other one. So I was like, oh, this is what you were looking for? And she was like, no, the other one. And I was like, something told me to get the other one. <laughs> and I remember she, did, she didn't get mad, but she was so serious. that I remember she was like, listen to me. She was like, that's not something told you. That's your spirit telling you. And she was like, and everybody doesn't have that. And you mm-hmm. need to learn how to listen to it. It'll help save you trouble. It'll help save your life. And she was just so like, matter of fact that I was like, okay, you know, she didn't holler. She didn't raise her voice, but I knew she was serious. Like, mm-hmm. and she was like, you know, everybody doesn't have that. And if you don't learn how to listen to it now, like you'll miss out. <laughs> oh no. I don't get it. It's okay. You get it. <laughs> I was like, yes, Lord, come on with the cancellations. <laughs> Oof, we going in it. Now I'm just kidding. You know, I don't know if you know this, but I'm black. Uh, am I good? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> he's with the best of them. And he's oh, one of my favorite men. <laughs> <laughs> that that intro sounds like much more than who I actually am. <laughs> Okay, so my guest of honor is a philanthropist that has been featured locally and globally for her community efforts. She has appeared in the Dallas Morning News and the Fort Worth Star Telegram. She's currently working as an accountant and she defines herself as a celebration queen. She has created her own lifestyle blog entitled The Mini Bar. She's a lover of life, puppies, and a good French 75. <laughs> she's, she's a, All about it. That's so funny. She's a generous soul that is fresh to death everywhere she goes. My guest of honor today is the beautiful Ashley Johnson. How you doing? Thank <laughs> you. You hype me up. Like, no. <laughs> it's like, true, it's though. It's, it's true. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I'm just like, oh, I, when you told me, like, hey, you know, I'm going to reach out, see if you're open. I was like, me? Like, no, I'm totally down for it. <laughs> I feel like everybody was like that when I asked the people that I asked, they're like, well, why why me? I was like, bro, y'all have a lot to offer. I'm telling you. But you but you know what? That's real. And that's something I had to check myself because because I was like, that's so nice of her. Like I almost felt like that's so nice of her to be doing this little charitable work to help me feel like and then I was like, you know what? Like that's something I had to comfort myself about. Like, okay, why do I think everybody else is doing more? Like, mm-hmm. or you know, there's certain things I do that I don't post on social media. Yeah. But other people will be posting. I'm like, but that that might be all they do for a moment, right? It's a moment. That's all it is. Like yeah. so I really had to comfort you. Like, will you ask me? And then I was like, oh, that's so cute. That she would try to make me feel decent. And I was like, you know, I'm come up, like, why am I doing stuff like that? Like, because <laughs> you are worthy. So, no, so it's yeah, all I good. appreciate it. How has quarantine been going for you so far? Quarantine has been, I feel like it's ever changing, right? Like, every time I'm kind of like, okay, I'm getting the, mm-hmm. this is my new normal. Then it's like an added element. And I'm like, okay, just joking. Like, this is my, this is my new normal. And then, <laughs> So um, when quarantine started, I think it was a little different because here, you know, I'm so close to New York and DC yeah. that, you know, like things, like things happened in Seattle and I was like, okay, you know, it's here. Like, okay, maybe it won't get too bad. Then New York started popping off. And then um, I feel like the meme where they were like, oh, everybody's like, I, my friend work at the Pentagon. Like my friend work for the CDC. And I, I did have a friend at the CDC and she was like, listen. My friend was like, hey, uh, my friend's wife says she worked at the CDC. And she was like, you need to go this week. You need to pull cash out your bank. And you need to stock up on toilet paper and water. And you need to do it by the weekend. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I mean, it was picking up, but it was still like early March. You know, I was kind of like, okay, you know. But I was like, well, she wouldn't tell me if not. And I mean, she was right. Because by the time Friday hit, shelves empty no flour it took weeks where I could even get flour to bake at home like flour toilet paper so just like going through that and then being like okay you know I really thought like so then I told my parents back home in Texas I'm like hey I try to tell my people like I'm not trying to be scared y'all not trying to use scare tactics but I'm I'm telling you like I was sending pictures like I'll go to the store I'm like this is the third grocery store shelves empty you know I'm like wow get get stuff now so you know you don't have to be stuck out later um but yeah, so it's kind of like weird. And then it was kind of like, okay, you know, we do our part. You know, I was like, I bet, you know, by the time June comes, July would be good. Like, now I'm like. <laughs> that's what we <laughs> thought. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we thought. And so that yeah. was kind of my hope originally was like, okay, you know, we do this for a couple of weeks. It's March, you know, May, June come around. We'd be back to 
back to some sense of normal. And then when May and June came around and I was like, oh, this is what I was pushing myself to. Like, if you could just make it till May. <laughs> and the bitch mark. <laughs> yeah, that was like, but I was like, oh, okay, if I could just make it to here, it'll be all good. And I was like, bruh, okay, like, I got to really change everything. Um, you know, like I was going to church online, Sunday school online. Mm-hmm. And um, I was supposed to be in a wedding in March in Texas. I had to cancel my flight. I had bought a dress. I wasted, like, I feel like I wasted so much money. And I had to be like, the week of the wedding, I had to be like, I'm really sorry. Wow. Uh, my, my job is saying, if I cut, if I leave, they're going to make me, they're not letting me come back in the office. Like, they're making me quarantine. They ain't let me back in. Um, and more so, I was also concerned. I was like, you know what? If I, if I bring something home, I'm going to feel bad, right? Because yeah. they weren't really having bad cases. So I was like, the last thing I want to do is come home and feel like, oh, I saw my grand, my papa, and now he's sick. And I think, what if I, what if it was me? You know. So I was like, you know, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna have to back out. And then, literally, like a couple of days before, then my hometown they start getting cases, and Dallas was like, oh, boom, boom, because every single yeah. day was like something new, you know. So it was like, oh, I, I really feel like I made the right decision, but now, honey, Greg Abbott got Texas looking wild. I'm like, I, now, now I don't want to come because I'm afraid I'm going to get it in Texas. So <laughs> Seriously, we opened up way too, like, I was like, y'all just finish out the, the original plan and maybe if we would have finished out the original plan, things would have stayed copacetic. But what really got me was that, okay, if you wanted to open up, I really thought it was premature, but okay. But you didn't even make face masks a requirement when you opened up. So I'm like, okay, well, I, that's what confused me because here you know face masks were like oh you should do it stores kind of got to the point where they're like oh you have to do it but when they finally said okay we're gonna go to phase one then it was mandatory it was like yeah if you go be out you gotta do it and i was like well, they waited long enough but then i thought about it I was like, that makes sense mm-hmm. but texas was like we ain't got no virus <laughs> i was like oh okay like that's texas cool. pride you know we all have texas pride we we love our state oh i know but I, i'm not I may or may not still hold a Texas license. I ain't gonna go on record and say I do, but I ain't gonna say that I don't. You know, we're born to love Texas. Like they teach us that from birth. So, yeah. I mean, so so that's where, like we say, how just, it's just been different because then I didn't see my family, and then been like looking at it, I'm like, realistically, if I don't see them, then I don't know will I be able to. Like when Christmas comes around, like once flu season hits, I don't know what the virus is gonna do, and so. Yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, it's just hard adjusting to being like, okay, you know what? Now we just have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. And I feel like that's been my theme for quarantine to be like, hey, you know what? I got to get comfortable being like, I just don't know. And I have to ride with that right now. Like, I don't know a lot of things. Yeah. Much like the world. We don't know. So Yeah, yeah we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, in the sense of uh, that being comfortable, being uncomfortable, making the decision to move to D.C., um how did that come about because I know a lot of students they're like I want to leave home but my parents kind of sheltered me so I don't know if I'm Mm -hmm. ready to leave home Mm -hmm. so could could you take me through that for a second okay before I'll start with the original I'm gonna say I am from East Texas okay and I went to college in Fort Worth Mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna tell you a lot when I got ready to leave like the night before when I kind of saw a couple of my friends oh I cried like a baby I didn't cry in front of them but when I got <laughs> the real Jean, I was like, bye y'all, bye y'all. And when I remember when I got in that shower, and I, I mean, I was like crying because I just everything was like really real, you know. Like I was like, I want to do it. I know I knew it was a good decision to do it. Mm-hmm. I just still had like so many unknowns. Like, you know, I'm not gonna know anybody. Like I've been in this town where I literally graduated with some people I started kindergarten with. Like I have been, you know, like okay. I've traveled, but it's different. Like, I'm going to be on my own. I mm-hmm. won't know anybody. Um, and so I, I, it was like a torn thing where I was, like, sad, but I wasn't like, oh, I can't go. Mm-hmm. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go, but I just don't know how it's going to work out. Like, is it going to, what am I going to do? Like, okay. And so I went, went to Fort Worth, went to school, graduated, um, and I ended up working out in Fort Worth. I was like, oh, I like it here. You know, I work here. And then I worked in oil and gas and that was kind of like, you know, oil money is good money because it's dirty money. It's filthy money. And that's just being honest. I'm not knocking nobody who does it. I just know I've seen, yeah. you know, um, I've seen, I've worked on the EMP side. I've worked on fracking. I mean, I've worked on all the sides. I see what kind of you, 
go into people's neighborhoods and you'd be like, hey, we want to run a pipe on your land and like, it could probably mess up your water, could do whatever, but we're going to build a park and we're going to build you a new school. You know, like it's, yeah. when you really get to see, I was like, okay, it's, it's, it's good money because it's dirty. I mean, I mean, I worked at a company and I valeted my car every day. They washed my car for me. I li- was living a really good life mm-hmm. and um, got kind of bounced around because that's kind of what happens. You do mergers and acquisitions. Somebody's always buying somebody. So I worked for a company for a year. They did a merger. I worked for a new company and then they did an acquisition. So they're like, okay. So then I bounced to a new company. I, went, I moved to Oklahoma mm-hmm. and moving to Oklahoma was kind of hard because I was like, felt like I was college girl, college me again. Like, yeah. Ooh, I don't know anybody out here as a Texan. It already hurt my pride to go to Oklahoma of all places. So I was going to go somewhere. <laughs> so, so I was like, you know, I don't know anybody. I'm coming across this Red River, like, you know, okay. But, but I knew the way things worked out, it was, it was the next step to take. I would have been mm-hmm. foolish. Like, I, the way things had worked out, I was like, oh, it's, this is what I should do. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to have to do it, and I'll figure it out. Like, it always, I always make it, you know, figure it out, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to, back in my hometown, people know my family. My family has been there for a long time. And I really thought it was important for me to go somewhere where I had to make my own name, like yeah. really establish my own kids, or establish for myself that, hey, if I, if I do something, somebody's like, oh, they're not doing it for me because I'm so-and-so's daughter and so-and-so's niece and somebody's friend and so-and-so's whatever, that they're yeah. like, oh, no, you, we know you, we know your work ethic, we know you, whatever, we got you. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I'm going to go to Oklahoma. And I will say, when I was in Oklahoma, I met some amazing people and it was a good good for that that's all it was good for (laughs) oh no (laughs) to this day i call oklahoma no oklahoma and i was like listen child when i come across that next time i come across that red river i ain't coming back like this is it (laughs) um you know it was just it was just it just felt so different i will say one thing now this is if people don't get into this, they'd be like, oh, you crazy. But <laughs> one thing I didn't like about Oklahoma was I stayed still being so prideful of Texan. I barely stayed right across uh, <laughs> the state line, right? Yeah. Um, partially because the city that I was working in is called Ardmore. None of the rentals allowed dogs. Even like mm. people who rent their house out, they was like, we don't want no pets at all. And I was like, I mean, I'll pay a wow. fee. Like, it's cool. My dog, my dog is trained. They wouldn't allow me. So then I was like panic. I'm like, well, there's nowhere for me to live. Like everything is so spread out. So just so happened, uh, Windstar, <laughs> my Texas, no Windstar. Windstar was literally building an apartment complex, and they only had they had like part of the faces done, like half of it maybe done. And so I got a brand new apartment, moved there. So I would just like drive into work every day. So I was like, okay, it's cool. I'm not too far across state line like I just when I girl I was in Texas every day I was like go to go to Walmart in Texas go you know whatever I was like it's cool um and so you know one thing was it was my friend was like oh well at least it's really peaceful and it was peaceful but it was like eerie and yeah. Oklahoma got a lot of blood on this land I do know the history but yeah. to really live out there like even when I would run or like I would take the dog out early in the morning it would be so quiet but it was like this eerie I, I don't know I just was like oh no like this is yeah. why y'all be having all these tornadoes like this. Like this is this is why it's tornado out. Like so, it was good and it was bad. So I did my, I did my long hard eleven months in Oklahoma, <laughs> working for this new oil company, um, for new to me. And they decided, you know what, they relocated me. Cool, I come out there, and then one day they were like, hey, you know what, our executive team they had gone public. They're like, our executive team decided we want to go to the U.S. oil capital of the world, which is Houston. And they were like, we're going to shut this office all the way down and take you to Houston. Hmm. And, you know, like as Texans, I feel like in a Texas, as a Texan, you either like Houston or you like Dallas, but you don't really like both. True. You you know, like you can like other two cities, but Houston and Dallas, you, you are one way or the other. You don't really like both. Or you dislike both. Or you dislike both. Yes. You might dislike both, but you don't ever like both. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I'm not going to Houston. Like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm not doing it and so they were and plus the way they presented it to me was on a Friday hey you know what we made the announcement we want to take you with us to Houston 
you need to let us know by Monday evening. Three days? So I was like, and I was like, not only that, over the weekend, and I was like, I haven't even talked to my, to my leasing office, the low, I was like, you relocated me here. I haven't even been here a year to figure out like how it's going to work. And so to me, one thing I think I learned at a young age, I feel like indecision is a decision. And so all weekend, I couldn't make a decision. I was like, I just don't know. I was weighing pros and the cons. I wrote it out. I put it in my phone. I did all the things. And then Monday came. I think I had to let them know by like 2.43 p.m. At 2.45, I still didn't have an answer. And I was like, you know what? That's my answer. Mm -hmm. If I don't know and I don't have an answer, then it's not going to work out. Because everything that's meant for me to do has worked out where I'd be like, oh, I know. I know this is the right thing. I didn't have to force my way. I put in the work, but I don't have to force it. So um, I was like, you know what? I told them, no, I don't want to take the offer. I will stay with you all until you close the office. I'll train somebody else. I'll do whatever. And I'll look for a new job. Mm-hmm. And so at that point, I was like, in my mind, I had already decided like, oh, I'm probably just going to go to Dallas. I'm going to go back to Fort Worth. I'm going to go to Dallas. I'm going to live my best life. <laughs> Be at Clyde Warren on the weekends with my dog. Like, right. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do all the things. But I did say, I was like, you know what? But now is the time I should just take a job and change industries. I should just go after jobs, a job that's a good job, regardless of where it is. Mm -hmm. Now's my chance. I don't have to put no kids in school. I don't have to worry about, you know, a spouse and does this work for them? Like, it's only me. Like, so I should take this opportunity and go. So there was a job I really wanted out in California. There was a job I really wanted in D.C. There was a job I really wanted in Dallas. I'm trying to think where else there was somewhere but the job in Dallas it was looking like that was going to be I had gone through multiple interviews I was like this is going to be the job I get they're like this is going to be where I go I'm going to go back to Dallas I'm going to find somewhere to live had already been looking at apartments like this is what I'm (laughs) going to do and uh because also you know like when you live far away sometimes we're like oh well if you live here we got candidates closer like you know we ain't got to pay for fly them out we ain't got to do the things Mm -hmm. cool so when I applied for the job I saw the job and then it went away and I was like, okay. And then I happened to see it again. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like I'm going to go with what? So I applied and I was like, I know, you know, different areas are different. Like Dallas, the job market is one way. DC, I know the job market is crazy, crazy. Like it's plenty of people that I can ch- take, but I'm gonna mm-hmm. go for it. I'm gonna just put in for it. And I got a call one day and I was like, you know, we want to see if you're still interested. So at that point, I was feeling the, going through this Dallas uh, interview mm-hmm. and then I was going through the DC thing. So Dallas, it seemed like, it's like, oh yeah, it seemed like we really, I'm like, they seem like they're into it. So DC, um, I took a job at the Washington Post. So they were like, okay, I did a phone screen and I was like, okay, cool. Then I did a phone interview with the director and I was like, okay, cool. That was like an hour or so. I'm like, cool. So then they were like, okay, we want to fly you out. I'm like, you flew out. out. Fly <laughs> fly me like okay so they, they're like you know we want to fly you out um at this point I'm 26 27 so I'm like you know this this is cool because this is something I haven't experienced before so they're like we're gonna fly you out um we want to t- put you in touch with the secretary you tell her what I mean she was like listen here's all the flights coming in and out that day you tell me when you want to come mm-hmm. you tell me when you want to leave and I'm booking a hotel. They put me up in a nice hotel. I mean, they were really trying to sell it to me, which really mm-hmm. opened my eyes as far as being a, a Black woman in corporate America dealing with the poli- office politics and different things of how, like, you can request, you can require certain, like, you know, I didn't require, but you can get certain things. Like, yeah, that's not too much, you know? Like, you know, yeah. cause my dad was kind of like, from an old school perspective, my dad was like, well, hey, if, the job in Oklahoma is offered to send you to Houston. It's a guaranteed job. Why wouldn't you take, you know, like he was like the safe route. That you part. got a job. They already offer you a job. So why are you not just going to take the job? So now you're going to not know if you have a job or not. And so I was like, I understand. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, I, I get what you're saying. I was like, I just don't think, you know, and I, I mean, that's all I could tell him was just like, I just don't think it's that's it. for me. Like, and decision is the decision. And I, and it was like the most respectful way I could. I just was like, I just don't think so. Because, you know, at that point I was like, I got to be the one to live with this decision. Like, yeah. so if I do it and I get down there and I'm unhappy and I'm miserable, it's, it's on me. And so, you know, they flew me out. They were just really trying to show me. Um, I went to this interview and the interview was three hours. I remember when I came out, I felt like I had worked 
a whole work week. Like, oh, no. they, they took me into an interrogation room. I did an interrogation for an hour and you sit in this little room, they go back and forth. Then I had another interview with somebody else and then I finished with the director. So when it was all said and done, I was like, bruh, I'm exhausted. Yeah. And if they don't give me the job, I, I feel like I killed it. Like I came in here, I did what I needed to do. Um, I did all I could do. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad I even got the opportunity because it just opened my eyes, right? Like it's a good experience. If nothing else, yeah. it's cool. And so I got on the flight back. I, after the interview, I had lunch. I frolicked a bit. Then I got on the flight back. And on the flight back, I was like, so, something was just like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just get on the Wi-Fi real quick. I'm going to pay for this little Wi-Fi and I want to check my email. And so when I checked my email, there was an, an email from the lady in HR, but it didn't have, it didn't have a message in it but it had an attachment with benefits. Mm. So I was like, and I was like, oh, she might've sent this to me on accident. Like maybe she didn't you know, send it to me, she went to somebody else, but she didn't say anything. So I didn't respond. My friend was like, are you gonna respond? I was like, no, I'm not gonna respond because she <laughs> either knows she sent it to me or she'll find out later. Like I'm, I'm gonna wait it out and see. So I flew back um, the next morning. I got up and went to work back in Oklahoma. I drove back, went to work and they called and like, we wanna offer you the position. And I took it. Like, I just was like, okay. And the, and the Dallas job that I thought I was going to get when I was like, okay, I have to wait and see. So mm -hmm. then at that point they were like, we're offering you this position. You can let us know in 24 hours. Ooh. I'm like, okay. So I was like, <laughs> dang, I'm really trying to hear from Dallas too, to see like, do I want to compare, you know, cause Dallas ain't Texas ain't got no state tax, you know, yeah, like yeah. considering like, you know, what, what, what cost of living? Like, okay. Like, uh, let me see before I just make, jump up and make a decision. Cause in my mind, I was like, yes, I'll take it. But you don't ever do that. Ladies and gentlemen, don't y'all ever do that. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Even if you know it's everything you ask for, yeah. take your time. And, you know, don't, don't want to be the, create that pre precedence of like, oh, I'm the eager black employee. Yeah. Because then that's how they kind of treat you. Like, oh, okay. You eager? Cool. We're going to work you a little harder, pay you a little less mm -hmm. than Kyle over here. And so, you know, I was like, okay, you know, like trying to handle business. Like, okay, I want to look over it think over it and let you know and so at that point I was like you know I hope I hear from Dallas Dallas hit me back and was like oh you know what we just had a change we're not even gonna hire this position so I was like there you have it yeah and I accepted and I was like okay I'm gonna do it and I came out here and I have been out here almost five years in September five years in September that's um, awesome holding it down <laughs> look see and it's a lesson in all of that you, you definitely took the time to think about what you wanted versus letting your parents dictate what you do or like letting mm -hmm. the outside forces be like, you know, this is guaranteed. You should take that. Right. And and I think I think that's like a huge thing that I would encourage people to do is really get to like know yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, because I remember being really, really, really young. I mean like, I don't know, maybe second grade. And I remember I was with my Mima and we were doing something. And she asked me to go get some, whatever she asked me to get, there was like two options. And I was like, oh, I think it's this one. Mm -hmm. And then I second guessed myself and I went and got the other one. So I was like, oh, this is what you were looking for? And she was like, no, the other one. And I was like, something told me to get the other one. <laughs> and I remember she, did, she didn't get mad, but she was so serious. that I remember she was like, listen to me. She was like, that's not something told you. That's your spirit telling you. And she was like, and everybody doesn't have that. And mm -hmm. you need to learn how to listen to it. It'll help save you trouble. It'll help save your life. And she was just so like, matter of fact that I was like okay you know she didn't holler she didn't raise her voice but I knew she was serious like mm -hmm. and she was like you know everybody doesn't have that and if you don't learn how to listen to it now like you'll miss out so wow. I think that you know when I got older I grew up very southern so I just felt like you know it was res you be respectful and then sometimes what black parents to deem as respectful is really like you just do what I say because I said yeah do it and, and that's don't not to me. don't don't ask no question and that's not to trash black parents I just think that's like the generation, like, I think, okay, my grandmother, the things she did for me would influence how I raised my kids. And I'm like, and our parents, they're great. Their grandparents, their great grandparents, some of them were born in slavery. So you got that same thing of, you don't ever question. Authority. Yeah. yeah. And what I say is what I say. And so, you know, my dad growing up, he always had the best intentions, but it was very much like, what I say is what I say. And that's all it's going to be. Yeah. That, that's all it is. And so, you know, really having to learn to come into my own of like, hey, you know, I, I, I do hear what you're saying. I don't think that's a good decision for me. And say, really making up in my mind that like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. And this is it, period. 
Because I feel like if you don't make up in your mind, then when somebody's like, well, why would you do this? And no, you really should consider this. Then you're on the fence, right? Yeah. But once I've, <laughs> once I've made up my mind in true Taurus fashion, like, that's it. Like, <laughs> I, 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 made, I made the decision. Um, this is what we're going to do. And I, by the time I made that decision, it's been calculated. I've thought things through and I'm like, okay, this is where I'm going with it. And that's it. So yeah, it was, and then I, and then I was that college kid again. Cause then I was like, oh, okay. I'm leaving Oklahoma and I'm in a different time zone. It's only one hour, but sometimes uh, that hour makes a difference because difference. like when you try to call your parent, you know, like when they try to call, I'm like, I'm still at work. And then by the time I get in and get settled, you know, I might have to do something. It's eight, nine o'clock. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm really tired. And they're like, oh, well, I'm gonna call you at nine o'clock my time. I'm like, what's well, already 10 yeah. o'clock? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, like, or, or they'd be like, oh, I'm gonna call you before I go to bed. And you call me at 1030 Central. I'm like, it's 1130. Like, you know, like, it just was, you know, like, hey, I'm going here. And I did know of people in the area. My, my parents have friends and stuff in the area, but not any, like, I was just still like, okay, it's a risk. Like, I could get here. And I'd be like, this not it. This not but it. But I think the one thing, the one thing I was like, you know, Texas ain't going anywhere. And if I get here, then hey, it's cool. But main thing is, I think one thing that's been big to me is like, I don't want to have regrets. Yeah. So if I get a chance to be on my deathbed, because that's not a guarantee, but if I get a chance to be on my deathbed, I don't want to be like, well, dang, I wish I would have taken more chances or I wish I would have gone after this. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, my parents, my dad is not a mover. Uh, when I moved into, when I moved into college, I remember he was like, listen, don't act, when it's time for you to come home for the summer, I'll pay somebody, figure something else out. I'm not, <laughs> I don't move. I'm not moving you. He was like, that's not my thing. We'll figure it out, but I'm not coming back up here to move you. Like, I feel you'll you. get somebody else. And so, you know, yeah, he, he was, he was like, I'll pay somebody. You can find somebody, you can do it. <laughs> whatever it would have to be, but I'm not coming back up for it. So I was like, okay. So even when I moved from Oklahoma here, um, at that point, it was a little odd because learning the lessons, like I got, I came out here um, like a month before I moved and I was looking for a place. Mm-hmm. And so I scheduled like some appointments and I was like, I'm gonna go to this apartment, this apartment. And just the difference in market, like I visited one property and I was like, oh, this is a great property. I visit at 10 o'clock in the morning. I was like, okay, I have another appointment at 11. And depending on how it goes, I'll let you know. And she's like, okay. I didn't even get the car and park from the other appointment. It was some people waiting behind me. They leased the apartment, put the money down, did everything. So she was like, we're, we're almost at capacity. She's like, that's the only, I think what they had left was like two bedrooms. And I was like, I don't want to pay for that. Wow. So I was like, okay. So things, so then I started living, running how fast, like I have to move. And so when I didn't see anything, I was like, I don't see anything that I think I'm ready to just move here into. And once I get there and start learning like how to commute and how to take the train, you know, like I never took no public transportation, like, mm-hmm. you know, really have to figure it out. I was like, then that could change things. So I ended up taking like a long commute out, staying with one, um, staying with somebody else. And I was like, okay, that'll give me an idea. Mm-hmm. And I'll find a place again, because I don't feel like you got to force things. You put the work in, but I was like, if I take a place now, I'm just forcing it. And I don't even think I will like it. Like, mm-hmm. so I um, look for a place went to a place and I was like, okay, I think I like this place. And the lady was like, okay, well, if you want to apply in order to apply and hold the apartment, it would be $850 because you got to pay the application fee. You got to pay the something else fee. So I was like, I mean, thankfully I was in a position <laughs> to be able to do it, but I was like, bruh, $850. Yes. She, the way she said it was like, she asked me for $150. Yeah. To apply. And I was like, you know, okay, well, what if I was gonna apply somewhere else too? Like, I guess y'all are all gonna have my money tangled up. So she's like, oh yeah. So I apply for the building and I'm like, okay, it's a cute apartment. I think I'll feel comfortable here. And <laughs> the the first my first full week here was the anniversary of the March on Washington. The March on Washington. Wow. Oh, no, I'm sorry, the Mil- the Million Man March. Million Man mm-hmm. March. So Faircon was going to be here and people were coming in from out of town. They were like, you know, it's going to be a big deal. And so I had asked, I was like, can I get my keys on a Friday? Cause Saturday I knew I was going to be at the March. I was like, you know, is it possible for me to get my keys on Friday? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Friday before the lady calls, she's like, Ashley, I'm so sorry. The apartment I showed you is not what we actually have available. And now this point I've already had stuff, some stuff shipped there. So I'm like, what do you mean? She was like, I made a mistake and I looked at the square footage, but that's not the actual floor plan, but I think you'll love it. And so I was like, 
it was it was a black girl I was like now sis you don't even know me like how you think I love it so right. I went there and I hated it oh because you're not when I say I hated it it didn't look anything like what I had viewed it was in a different phase everything nothing that I wanted mm-hmm. and I remember being feeling like again well at least you got something should you just you know like okay should you just settle and in a year or so you can move and so I was like oh, no I don't want it Right. And the guy, the guy that showed it to me, I remember he was like, well, what do you think about this? And he showed me some kind of feature. And I was like, honestly, I don't like it. <laughs> and he was like, well, you know, you, he's like, we can't be too picky. And I remember I was like, I can be too picky. I, I said, can. because I, I said, I can, because I paid, a, I'm gonna pay the rent every month. And because you told me that something else was available. And that's what I chose. And I like it. This looks nothing like that. So actually I can. And I was like, as a matter of fact, I'm done with the tour. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was like, you need to run me that money back in my account. Then I had to get real loose. <laughs> you got to run my money back in my account just as quickly as you took it because mm-hmm. this is your fault. I don't want you to say, oh, well, you know, we usually refund money less the application fee because all of this is your fault. So I want yeah. all the money back. All of it. And all of it. And so at that point, you know, I felt the pressure like, dang, I got to find something. And so I scheduled a day on a Sunday and I was like, okay, all these places, all these places. And I came to the building where I live now and they closed at five. I think I got here at like four o'clock and I was like, okay, you know, I'm going here and see. And I went in and the lady was like, I'm gonna show you around, showed me around. So I'm like, okay, great. And I was like, I like it. Mm-hmm. And she was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, I, I like it. I like the, the lighting, the windows. I was like, I want to apply. So she's like, okay, great. So I sit down. So, she, so I'm looking at the time and I'm like, well, can I go ahead and apply? I know it's getting close for y'all to close. She's like, no, let's do it now because this is the last day of our special. And if you apply today, you can apply. We waive the application, no, the admin fee, the pet fee, the wow. amenity fee, all the things. She said, she said, so really all it would take is $150 and you have this apartment. And if you get approved, it'll be yours. And I was like, that's it. That's she it. Like, that's it. Yes. So I said, okay. So I said, well, let me, let me apply. So I apply. So she said, well, I just want you to know, um, I'll put it in right now, but it's after hours. It's a Sunday. It might take a day or two for the to say we approve you or not. So I'm like, okay. And she said, we don't do sliding scale score is not quite where we need to be. You just pay a higher deposit. She was like, either in or you out. So I was <laughs> like, okay. So I was like, well, let's go ahead and do it. So we put it in. And she was like, no worries. She was like, I'm just letting you know, like, you know, some people were like, oh, well, can I just pay more deposit? She's like, we don't, we just don't do it that way. I'm like, okay, yeah. fair. So I put it in. So she's like, okay, I got all the information in. Thank you. You know, I'm like, thank you. And I get my, I grab my purse. I'm about to leave. She was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, oh Jesus, <laughs> what is it? And she was like, actually your credit, your credit came back already. It you're already approved. And I was wow. like, but she was like, you're good to go. You got a home. Just that, just that quick. And so that's why I think I want young people to know, like when something is right, it will, it will fall. You don't have to force it. Like you still got to put in the word, yeah. but you don't have to force it. You know? And I was like, so then I was like, okay, cool. Um, it was a little more than I think if you ask me what percentage of money you're, you should you put on your rent, like you, it was more than what I wanted at that time, but mm-hmm. I was willing to pay more because I felt so comfortable. I was like, oh, I like the neighborhood. I feel like if I got to be here by myself, I'm cool. I'm cool with being by here by myself. I don't feel uncomfortable. If mm-hmm. I got to take my dog out at night, I don't feel uncomfortable. So I was like, okay, I'm willing to do it. So she was like, I mean, I came there thinking I'm just going to look and see what I want to do. And she, I left here within a whole apartment, knew what number <laughs> it was going to be. And she was like, here are the options, you know, you choose which floor, or which, which way you want to face and options. got it worked out. And so, yeah, I'm like, options. options. Whereas in the other place, they were like, this all we got, you take it or leave it. Right. And so that's what I think, uh, you know, people, I want people to really understand is like, yeah, you put in the work. Sometimes you have to, you know, bob and weave a little bit. It's a little bit of bending. That's one thing, mm-hmm. but when you got to conform and do something, that's not, to me, that's not the right fit for you, in my okay. opinion, like that's just been, I've seen it too many times in my life. Like that's just not the right fit for you. Absolutely. You talked about how your grandmother told you that that voice that you hear is important and you don't discount Mm -hmm. that voice. So I think that a lot of times our students uh, are the youth struggle with, should I try to be cool or should I try to be, you know, fully in my Christian or fully in my spirituality? Mm -hmm. And I think they struggle with that. So What would you tell them if they're struggling with that? I think the first thing I would say is know why you believe what you believe. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I think growing up, I grew up 
in the church. I didn't grow, you know, it's like people grow up going to church or you grow up in the church. I grew up in the church, you know, I did in the church. devotion. <laughs> I was in the choir. I, you know, I did, I was in the church. Um, and I, I, I enjoyed it. Like I loved it. However, mm. when I got older, I really had to start making sure I really knew why I believe what I believe. Mm-hmm. Or did I just believe it because that's what I always was told and that's what we believe, you know, like I, I really had to be like, okay, do I know why I believe this? Yeah. Um, because again, going back to authority thing would be like, oh, if somebody ever questioned me, you know, or even feeling like I could question. I remember I got in, I got in college and I had this professor in humanities and he was like, oh, we're going to go to this Buddhist temple and we're going to do whatever, whatever we're going to see. And I opted not to go, not because I didn't want to go. Only reason I didn't want to go was because he was trying to force it on us because he was mm. like, oh, I used to be Christian, but this is the way. And I don't even force my beliefs on anybody like that. I don't think that's, right. the, you know, the way. And so his approach to it was wrong to me now. If somebody said, oh, would you come? I'm like, oh yeah, like I'm willing to like see. But also a, a little part of me was like, oh, well, no, I can't. Like that's, that's um, not offensive to the Lord, but like, oh, that's like, I can't be you know, I got to only do what I do. I can't be participate in anything else. And now I think where I am now, I'm just like, I can observe what somebody else is doing. Mm-hmm. I've gone, I've gone to, I have friends who have Indian descent who believe Hindu and they'd be like, Hey, go with us to Garba. And I, and I've asked, I say, okay, when I go to Garba, my first time going, I was like, is it just all dance? Like what we're going to, or is there other, she's like, Oh, there'll be a blessing. So I was like, okay, so what's the bless? Cause now even in, even my Christian faith, Everybody praying for you ain't praying with. I mean, everybody praying with you ain't praying for you. So it's certain yeah. things I don't want people praying for me over. In general, in my own church, I don't want everybody laying hands on me. You know, so I was like, okay, well, when you say a blessing, mm-hmm. what all does that? <laughs> what all does that entail? You know, like really? <laughs> before I get in here, people was falling out on the floor. Like, you know, just tell me. And so she was like, no, 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 it's just a, it's a prayer, but it's in native tongue. And so she was like, you know, it's a prayer, it's a blessing. Remind me essentially of like going to like. um Episcopalian church, you know, they have the incense and, you know, they come through yeah. and they give you a blessing. Essentially, that's what it, that's what the equivalent, but, but I did ask her, so I, I said, well, if I get there and I'm not comfortable participating in the blessing, is that okay? Is that deemed offensive? You know, cause I want to be respectful. And I think that's something mm-hmm. people, um, kind of mix and they're like, oh, well, we can only believe one thing. So I think you really have to know why you believe what you believe mm-hmm. and lean into that because you may not agree with everything. You know, when I hear what people, when I hear people say, oh, well, you know, God never put more on you than he, than you can bear. I don't believe that person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't understand how people say that, you know, and they got the old big mama poster of the footprints in the sand. So I'm like, so which, so which one is it? Because yeah. God carried the lady through. She ain't do nothing. He met her where she was. Mm-hmm. He carried her through. And that's what I believe. So I don't believe, you know, like, oh, God will never put more on me than I can handle. Actually, he probably, he is going to, because that's when I have to lean into him and be like, God, you gonna have to yeah. go through. Cause like, it's no other way. I need you. I I need you. Mm -hmm. Can't nobody else get it done. It's going to be you. And so I think more so focusing on relationship over Mm -hmm. religion. I think that made a difference for me because to me, when I really focused on relationship and really understanding how God works for me and how I communicate with him, Mm -hmm. then I got to a point where I was like, oh, you can tell me nothing. You can say it's cool. You can say it's not cool. You can say whatever, because I already know for myself. Yeah. And I'm and I'm not forcing that on you. And I think that also people receive it differently that way. Like, right? Cause I'm not being like, oh, well, y'all do this. Like <laughs> I don't yeah. participate in those, you know, like, oh no. You know, I'm like, oh, you do that, that's cool. That's on you. Cause I for feel you. like <laughs> for you. Cause I feel like when you get to the gate, God's not gonna ask you about me. And vice versa. So mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, where whatever, even whatever with I what I within my beliefs, if you do something that's outside of those beliefs. I still don't feel like I got to condemn you because I got my own sins to, to answer for. Yeah. I got my own struggles. Maybe I don't sin like you sin, but I still got my own sins. So to me, I don't have to condemn you. Yeah. And if I'm going to condemn you, I'm going to start by condemning myself and condemning the things I got going on. So to me, I think that was more so my approach in school. I didn't judge people if they did like, okay, like that's you. I, still, I, I love you. I love you anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, even, even in college, you know, like I was never a high school drinker. I didn't even drink in college underage, not mm-hmm. because I thought it was wrong. I just, I was more so like, oh, okay, I'm, I really was kind of nervous because I was like, oh, I don't drink. So I don't know how I'm going to react. Like, am I going to yeah. start drinking and be like all over the place? Like I see some of the girl, you know, like I just, it wasn't my thing. Mm-hmm. But when other people did it, I never was like, oh, y'all shouldn't be drinking. 
Right. I was just like, oh, you good? So then it got to the point where when I got in college and when I finally did go to like college parties, you know, a, a couple times somebody was like, oh, you want something to drink? I was like, oh, I don't drink you out like a Coke or something like, <laughs> and bring it to me in a can because I don't drink no drink. I ain't seen nobody fix. So bring it, <laughs> bring it. Message. So, message. Message. I'm, I'm throw that out there. <laughs> message. And so, um, you know, like I wouldn't say, I was just like, oh, you got a Coke? Like, it's cool. And then I remember it got to the point where like a few times where we went to a few friends who were like, I had friends who were Greek. So, you know, they'd be like, oh, come to my party, stop by. Mm-hmm. You know, they wouldn't even, act, they didn't pressure. It was never a pressure thing because I didn't, I didn't condemn them. They didn't pressure me or right. be like, oh, we clowning you. Like you clowning us, we clowning you back. So it would be like, hey, you, oh, uh, y'all want something to drink? They'll come back with <laughs> blue punch or, or whatever, you know, whatever. And yeah. then they, they hand me a Coke and I was like, oh, thanks. You know, and it was just, so to me, I guess I felt like I can do two things can be true. Like I can love the Lord and I can have my relationship with the Lord, but mm-hmm. I don't have to condemn you if you don't, or if you if you practice differently than me, if you pray to Moses, if you pray to Allah, if you um, are Hindu and you're like, hey, I pray to Krishna and Ganesh and the deity of the nine deities, whatever it is, I can respect that. Yeah. And I can observe it. And if I observe if I observe that with you and you say, Hey, I'm having something at my um at at my synagogue or I'm having something at my temple and you know I would like you to come or be a part that I can't be like oh I can't really pretend. like I'm like hey you know what that's cool um I can come and I can observe and I can be respectful and that's not going to hinder I think people make Christianity seem so black and white mm-hmm. and I don't believe that it is just because there's so many interpretations of the Bible right. and I think that's one thing I started to be like was like you know, people swear by the King James version, but do they even know who King James is? Like, do I even know who King James is? Like, is King James the Donald Trump of my time? And that's not to throw shade to anybody who's like Donald Trump. It's just, I don't follow the same belief system as Donald Trump. So if yeah. somebody said, oh, he, he interpreted his Bible, do you want it? I'd be like, girl, no. And hard so pace. that's what I started, hard pass. <laughs> <hard, laughs> And so that's what I really had to do was be like, okay, you know what? Start to question everything. I had to unlearn a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, what do I believe? Even with something I had to go through with my tithing was that I had to like take a step back and be like, why am I doing this? Because I really felt like I started treating God like a genie. Like if something go wrong, I'd be like, well, I tithe my money. Like, right. because you know, that's, that's, or I tithe my money. I'm like, or I give money. I expect something really good to have it not because that's what somebody told me just because you know we sing the more you give the more he gives to you like it just became this thing of like oh mantra well, if mm-hmm. i'm tying my if i'm tied to my money like things should be great things should be good so i think really just my thing was i was confident in what i believed and being like it is what it is but i don't judge nobody else for it so since i don't judge anybody else for it nobody was really judging persecuting me for it right um, if i lived off a of far somewhere maybe somebody would have but I just felt like that was my thing. I was like, okay, well, I still love you. Like, it's mm-hmm. cool. And if somebody was doing something that was so out of the way that I felt like, hey, you know, I really don't want to associate myself. I just was like, okay, I just want to associate. I didn't have to announce it. Right. Oh, uh, you know, I can't associate myself. You know, just I step away. That. I just stepped, I just stepped away. And so yeah. I felt like that, that opened the ground for me to be like, hey, I can respect your, where you stand and you can respect where I stand. And we just go our separate ways if that's what it is. And so to me, that was why I felt like I didn't ever feel overly too pressured or, or one way or, or struggle with it because I was just like, oh, this is what I do and what I believe. Yeah. That's all, that's all I can be responsible for. You're securing I, yourself. I, I, can't, I cannot be responsible for what you believe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because my thing is even with the word, people are like, oh, we have to go out and, you know, tell the people. I'm like, you can tell the people, but the Lord don't beat the door down. He knocks at the door. Like, so I don't have to beat it over your head and tell you why you need to do my thing is, in my opinion, if I'm a believer, I also don't feel personally that I have to shout that I'm a believer to everybody because I feel like you should see it. And when you get in my presence, you should feel, you should be like, something is different. Something's different. Something is different. Like, I mm-hmm. can't put my finger on it. Something is different. Or if I'm in the store and I offer to help you, you'd be like, so, it was just like, you should feel it to me. Yeah. That's, to me, that's my responsibility as a believer, not to shout it and beat it over your head and be like, I'm a believer, I'm a believer, and mm-hmm. I love the Lord. and that's nice, but anybody can say that. I could quote scripture. That was at me. What is your heart like, though? You know, so yeah. I, and if I'm doing it right, then that is honoring the Lord because somebody else is going to see it and be like, oh, okay, well, let me, okay, it's let true. me be a part. You know, they may not, they may not even be Christian or turn their life to God, but they'll be like, hey, you know what? Let me, let me do better. And that's plants the seed. 
That's all I can try to do is plant the good seed. Yeah. And if I start there, then I trust that, okay, God, you're going to handle it how you want to handle it. You're going to work it out how you want to work it and go from there. So I think really just working on myself and focusing on myself, not in a selfish way, but just say, okay, Lord, let me get to a place where I can be of good witness without talking. Yeah. My, my actions say I'm of good witness. Yeah. And so that, that was really good. I think what helped me to be like, you know what, that's all I can do. And in the midst of doing that, if somebody sees it and it helps them inspire somebody else, great. But I'm just going to focus on doing my part and see how I feel, how I feel the Lord guides me to go from there. That's the only thing you can control. Right. <laughs> no, and, and, that's, control. And, that's, and that's what I think people get caught up is trying to control other people and trying to control other things. And then you lose, you lose focus. The focus is the Lord, right? If you're saying that's what you believe, like that's your focus. Mm-hmm. And when your focus is there, the rest will fall into place. If you're respectful and you got people in your group and your friends and they not respectful the fact that you love the Lord, they're not your friends because they can be respectful. Yeah. Ex- especially, and it's me, especially if you're being respectful. So my thing is I can't ever ask somebody to do something I'm not willing to do. So, yeah. but if I'm being respectful to you and you can't respect that I believe and I feel a certain way, then I'm like, okay, well, we just don't need to be cool because I'm extending you. I'm ask, I'm not, I'm just asking you to do what I'm doing for you. The same grace that you easy. enjoy is mm-hmm. that easy. So yeah. I think that's, a, that's, a, that I think is like, Hey, if you can do that and you can say, that's my, that's my barometer. If I can give you respect in this area, I expect you to give me the same respect. Mm-hmm. And if you can't, it's cool because I promise you they're not for you. You think they're for you, but I promise you they're not. They're not. Since we're on, on the friendship tip, what are your five non-negotiables when it comes to like relationships, friendships? Mm, my five non-negotiables. I would say one is going to be respect. And I would say when I say respect, uh, respect of me, how you respect me. Mm-hmm. But a big thing for me is how you respect other people. Yeah. Um, like if we go out to eat, and you kind of nasty with the waiter or you nasty with people of service, you mm-hmm. know, like to me off top, I'm gonna be like, no. Um, if you nasty to homeless people, because DC has a large homeless population. Yeah. So if I see, you no, know, and, and that don't mean you gotta give money to everybody because there's so many homeless people out here and some people are truly homeless and there's a lot of scammers out here because it's so touristy. You yeah. know, so like to me, it's not, I don't judge that by, oh, did you give money or not? No, but um, you know, like, when I lived in Fort Worth, I lived um, stop six because I went to Westland. And at that point, it was like early in the gentrification phase, yeah. but, but it wasn't, it was still, it was still, you go a street down, you know, it was, you know, it was, you might see homeless people, you might see somebody on, you know, it was like, okay. Yeah. And I remember one day I saw a man and he was near the dollar store. And when people were coming out, he was like talking to them. And so one thing I have always had in my heart since a young kid is like a, a, a love for homeless people. Like I, I cannot explain it. I don't know why, but I always have. And so, mm-hmm. but I remember feeling like kind of awkward because he was kind of close and just in general, I don't like nobody being that close. If I don't know you, I prefer you just give me a little space. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, when I get out, like I don't, I don't want to be rude, but I don't want him to like run up on me you know so I was like okay and then I was like well you know like why so I was like okay well then I was like okay this is awkward and so people were walking past him like they just didn't you know walk like they didn't see him so then I was like you know what okay so I was about to back out now so I'm gonna wait so I rolled down the window I cracked it safely and I was like sir before he could ask me for anything I was like have you eaten Mm -hmm. and he was like no because to me, in a situation, if you're not if you're not comfortable, then find a way to have some control over it. So my yeah. thing was like, you know, before he can ask me, let me just see how it goes. So when he, I said, "Have you eaten today?" Mm-hmm. And he was like, "No, ma'am." So I was like, "Okay, uh, do you like it was Whataburger?" And I was like, "Do you, do you like Whataburger? You want something for Whataburger?" So he was like, "Oh yes, ma'am, that'd be great." So I was like, "Okay, what do you what would you like? I'll order it for you." And he was like, "Oh, whatever you get me." And I was like, "No, no, you know, what you, what you, what, you, what do you what do you like? Right? Like, what do you want?" So he was like, if you can just get me a, he asked for like a burger or something. So I was like, you want fries too? And he was like, oh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. And I was like, you want a drink? And he said, well, if you give me a small drink, but I can always get water somewhere. So I was like, okay. So I got him the largest drink. I could get him the largest fry I could get him. So when I brought it back, 
I was still a little nervous because I was like, okay, I'm, you know, still a woman by myself. So I was like, I'm going I'm to pull up and open the passenger side, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to open the passenger side. So I rolled the window down and I handed him the drink and I handed him the meal. Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, God bless you. And he went to shake my hand. And if you know me, you know, I don't like, ger- like ger- germs is germs, but you know, I don't like the, but when it comes to homeless people, I think I have a different, I would rather shake a homeless person's hand than to shake somebody in the office hand because people in the office is nasty. <laughs> like people, Very. people are, I'm like, it ain't nasty, nasty. Like, but if somebody who's homeless, I'm like, to me, it, that don't bother me. So I remember his hands were so dirty and I said, oh, and he was like, oh, I don't want to shake your hand. I said, it's fine. And so he reached out and he shook my hand and he took it to the trash can and he opened everything out on the trash can. I was like, how, you know, like, I was like, okay, I get it. He's doing what he's doing. But I was like, oh, on the trash can, like how, you know, like how sad, you know? And he was just like, oh, thank you. And so that's what I think people just have to do. Like, okay, if you're in a situation where you feel uncomfortable, find a way to gain a little bit of control and have a little leverage. Not mean you got to yeah. boss nobody, but I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'm a little uncomfortable, but let me just ask and see. And, you know, like, you know, and so when I've talked to people about it and sometimes people say, oh, well, if I see homeless people, you know, like there's been times where I had food and I was coming around and I gave them my food. And I was like, well, why are you giving them your food? Yeah. And they're like, you homeless. I'm like, but they don't know you. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? And I was like, so they're going to eat after you out of desperation because they need to. But like, and these are people I'm talking to who I know. So I'm like, I know you got $5 to spare. Like, why couldn't you just buy them something? Or give them the money. Yeah. And they were like, oh, no, if you're homeless, you should take what I give you. And I was like, but why? I was like, wow. because you could, you could have a, you could be carrying a virus that you, you find or you quit carrying a cold and now you give it to them. They can't go into the doctor. And I was like, or what if they don't like onions? They're like, well, if you're homeless, you should eat whatever. I'm like, if you don't like something, you just don't like something, you know, like, or mm-hmm. what if you have a food? I said, what if they got a food allergy? Now you making them decide between, do I just take it and be sick? Because I should be grateful. Again, you know, the whole, hey, mm-hmm. it's here. You should just take it. Yeah. Or, and I was like, why would you? And so to me, when I hear people say stuff like that, I'm always like, I don't judge it. I just be like, oh, okay, we just not on the same yeah. page. Like, Because to me, that's a lack of consideration. My thing is like, I took his full order. When he was like, I was like, do you want mustard? He was like, oh, ma'am, it don't matter. Oh, it does. It matters. Which <laughs> I, I'm trying to get you what you want because you deserve to have what I'm, I'm not going to be like, oh, you should be grateful. Because I think that's very tacky. Like how high and mighty of me to say, well, I'm going to get you some food. You should be grateful for what I got you. Mm-hmm. You, should, you should eat whatever I got you because if I didn't do it, you wouldn't have, like how tacky of me. So I'm yeah. going to get you something. I'm going to get you something that I know that you will like and you will enjoy. And so that's what I think when I look at people, that's one of my things is respect. How mm-hmm. respectful are you? How considerate are you? And more so on the scale of like, it's a balance. Are you more selfish or selfless? Yeah. Because to me, I know me, I'm very selfless i will give i will give i'll give so if you're gonna be selfish i know this is not gonna be an equal friendship because i'm gonna be no. doing for you just without thinking mm-hmm. and i'm not gonna do it to hold account of it but then it's gonna get to a point where i'm gonna be like well dang like you know like I'm... <laughs> or or not only that emotionally you yeah. know spiritually i'm giving i'm giving i'm giving and i'm like well damn i'm tired now because i'm like because you're not you're not reciprocating yeah so it's just like a, it's a dream i'm gonna be drained and so i feel like um respect consideration are you more selfless or selfish? I feel like character, because I need to know you, that who you are in front of me is who you are when I'm not around. Yeah. That, that, you, that you're not like, oh, well, I know Ashley don't play about this, so when I'm around her, I do this. No, I need to know that, like, I still need to know the real you. Like, yeah. is your character good? Am I associating myself? If I say, hey, you know what, y'all, I'm about to go out here, and I'm about to give out free sandwiches for the homeless, are you like, oh, I can't, I can't do that? Or are you going to be like, oh, I'm down? You know, like, hey, like, I, I feel like if, if you, you know, how down are you? That's what I need to know. Like, you down to, down the ride or you only want to ride when it's fun and it's cute and pictures for the gram and doing yeah. whatever? Like, no, are you really down? Um, and then the last thing, I don't want to say energy, but the energy is probably the best way to have for it. What my spirit tells me. Yeah. Because if I meet you and, like, you like, oh, you tell some jokes and we funny and we hee hee but something just don't. And I'm like, I can't put my finger on it. Like something is, I'll be like, oh, you know what? <laughs> Thanks. It was nice mm-hmm. meeting you. <laughs> bye bye. So I'm glad we got- <laughs> because if it don't sit right in my, listen, mommy mom said, if it don't feel right, it ain't right. And that's been something I could tell you time and time again in my life. Yeah. I have realized when it don't feel right, guaranteed it ain't right. You may not feel it and realize it till years from late, years from then. But if it don't feel right, it ain't right. So I really think the spirit, like if I have something that don't sit right, 
because there's times where I've met people and within an hour, I'm like, oh, this, yeah, you, me too. you and me, this, this, this is going to be cool. And so mm-hmm. I think also, you know, that's something, if you don't speak to my sphere or you speak and I'll be like, oh, something is off. Mm-hmm. I'll be cordial. I'll be very respectful. You won't catch me being like, oh, you want to come over or. No, nah, we can't share I'll space. Like, no. Mm-mm. I definitely won't bring you in my home. You know, uh-uh. I'll just be like, okay, you know, like, it was good seeing you and I'll see you when I see you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call me. I'll call you. Like, <laughs> I have my people call your people. <laughs> I have my people call your people. It's cool. It's cool. Like, I'm all right. <laughs> um, and so that's what I think also, like, learning to, like, lean into if it's kids listening or bro people listening, whoever really getting to know like when when something don't feel when somebody come around you're like oh I don't feel yeah that's that's a real thing it is you know I think people, I think people try to dismiss it and be like oh no I don't want to be judgmental you don't mm-hmm. have to be judgmental but you can feel you can feel when something be like mm-hmm. like I'm need to move I, it's real yeah the two energies can't stay around each other like you you feel that and you need to yes move. Yeah. that's that, and that's a real thing so I think you know really learning to be like okay you know what um yeah no so yeah that's that's one of my non good I think that's my off because I'm like if I feel like oh, okay you know we had a good time or we were out in a group and they you know told some jokes it was cute it was fun mm-hmm. but it don't feel right I'm like oh no it was a good time yeah and that's all that's all it can be we can't continue <laughs> this <laughs> and, I, and I think I think that's something people should be is selfish with your time because my thing is like I can always make more money but I can't make more time and I don't know how much time I got left so True. I'm trying to I'm trying to allocate it to be like, hey, you know what? Like, mm, I can't really give you too much if if it's not working, it's not working. It's no heart, it's no love loss, it's no heart feelings. But bye, mm-hmm. like, mm-mm. That-